gonna have sex with my ex, which is your current boyfriend. Yeah, because I She would... said prove it. So the way you decided to prove it was... By calling her to let her... For that she can hear it for herself. And then not only that, y'all had can lunch she, can together she let her daughter talk? I go in her room, I found receipts with two combos on it. I asked her what a combo is for. She... For him and her. You were kind of out there. She was maybe cheating. But you're saying that this happened throughout the relationship. Why so much difference when it comes to Miss Rubin? Cheryl, why so much difference when it comes to her? Miss Rubin and her sister weren't in that courtroom to joke around. To tell you how much business she meant, she brought her sister to court. Two sisters in court? You can bet that there was enough backup to fight Mr. Davis. Apparently, while she was growing up, she was told that Mr. Davis was her biological father. But now, after they have grown to be women, he is denying ever fathering Ms. Davis. To make the whole situation even more complicated, he says he has enough proof to back up his claim. Ms. Rubin, you and your sister are here today because you say that the defendant, Mr. Davis, the man you've always been told was your dad, is now stating that he is not your biological father. You say his actions are motivated by greed and he has torn your family apart. Mr. Davis, you claim you have legitimate reasons to deny paternity and claim to be a good man. In Ms. Rubin's defense, she said Mr. Davis had always been in denial of ever being her father. While she was growing up, he always treated her differently from his other children. It was so bad that even on Christmas Day, he would buy a bunch of toys and gifts for his other kids. But when it came to Ms. Davis's case, he treated her like she was a total stranger. Basically, it was as if she was constantly begging for her daddy's love. I wonder where it all went wrong. I mean, I just feel like he never treated me fair. With my brother and sister, he will bring things around like a Chris one Christmas, he bring a whole bunch of toys around, get them toys on top of toys, and then tell them, oh, play with your sister. Never brought me anything, always treated me differently. It's just, he never showed no love towards me. I'm always the one that was begging for his love when he was just giving all his love to both of them. When Mr. Davis was asked to tell his side of the story, what he said was pretty mind-blowing. For a start, he didn't even deny the allegations Ms. Rubin made against him. He said she wasn't lying, and he definitely treated her differently from his other kids. In his defense, he claimed that his reason for treating her the way he did was because he believed that her mother slept with different men while they were together. But Ms. Rubin called him a fat-ass lair. She was ready to fight him to the death. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Shine. Okay. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why, Your Honor. Yes, please. The reason do. why I treated Cheryl the way I treated her, because her mother slept around. You was a liar. Your mother did sleep. Mama, you was okay, liar. first of all, neither one you of you all was in there when it started, okay? She had three kids before I met her. Okay, she had you three. You supposedly she had you three with first. me. And now she, she has how many more after me? I did a grand total of 13. Even if she wasn't his child, those weren't grounds for him to act as if she didn't exist at all in the first place. The judge was furious with Mr. Davis. You could see it in her eyes and from her yelling that all she wanted to do was pick up a cane and beat the hell out of Mr. Davis. I mean, there is a possibility that the kids might be his, so why not just try to determine if the child was really his? Heads are definitely going to roll in this courtroom, trust me. What would make a man go to the store and get toys for two? of three children and walk into a house and disappoint a child for no reason. You should have brought her a toy if she wasn't your child, if she was your enemy's child. She, you should have brought her something because she's a child. <laughs> Like I said, heads were going to roll in that courtroom. It was very glaring that both Mr. Davis and Ms. Rubin never really had that father-daughter kind of bond. All they did was fight and accuse each other of so many things. At some point, it took a lot of work to determine who was actually telling the truth. Mr. Davis's story started to fluctuate. He started to claim he wasn't sure if any of his children were actually his because he knew for a fact that their mother was intimate with other men while they were in a relationship. I don't believe I was, I, I believe the judge was talking to me. Why man broke your promises then? Okay, Why sit right that's, there that, like that, that's on cool. me. That's, like graduation. That's on me. I own that. That was the, I told you, I said, let her get let you. Can I answer your question? 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 If you show up to my graduation, what did you do? First of all, first of all, that is a lie. Mr. Davis, let her speak. Let her speak. I want her to explain to you. His other daughter, whom he claimed was his gold and child was definitely not on his side in that courtroom. He said he went all out for her and did every single thing she wanted.
wanted while growing up, but she said they were all lies. He was never there for her, and she could count the number of times she saw her dad present in her life. As far as she could recall, there was honestly no father figure in her life as she grew up. I didn't have a man figure like in my life to tell me how, how to treat guys. I got to treat me so, you know, I look the guys like for love and everything. Like, uh, again, like them one minute and be gone next minute. I can have sex one minute and be gone or whatever. It's just like he have not been there. So you were sleeping around. You just, you were promiscuous. You could not. I but don't fall too far from the You tree. feel like you were looking for a father? Leave it alone and talk to me because he's showing who he is by his... State. Now their brother steps up to the podium to give his side of the story. He had quite a lot to say, and trust me, his story was very different from everything they had been saying in the courtroom. He claimed the only reason the father wanted to know if they were all his kids was because of very underlying illnesses that took the lives of both Mr. Davis's father and mother. These stories are starting to get pretty confusing, because who is actually telling the truth in that courtroom? As me hearing about this DNA test, it surprised me because if you ask for a DNA test and you claim you, I'm yours, you know what I'm saying? And then I hear that it's about uh, disease in the family. Why would you wait out the 27 years just to come to me with this? It's something you should have told me on the phone. Do something. Let me know Can what's happening. It's about child Can I address So now, anyone? disease in the family. Mr. Davis. Okay, here's what I mean by the disease in the family. I want my kids, if they are my kids, I want them to be protected. The conversation about child support pops up, and they get into another brawl about whether Mr. Davis paid for their child support or not. Lo and behold, Mr. Davis was in a lot of debt on child support. He was never consistent with the payment, and it accumulated into a debt of over $60,000. Is this DNA drama really about the child facing an underlying illness, or does he just want to get rid of the debt hanging over his head? Sounds like he has been the one telling the lies in this situation. Hey, for me to survive. Mr. Mr. Davis, one. I will see this. I see small no. payments here throughout the years that you've been making payments. What I'm trying to understand is, is this whole issue with you and the DNA test and wanting to know whether or not you're really their father. Is this really about the illnesses or is this about this huge it's both. child support debt? It is debt? both. It is both. It is both. Which Regardless of what they want to say, and, ne and neither one outweighs the other. It was evident these guys were never going to amend things. Mr. Davis and Ms. Rubin just wanted to find out the truth and be done with it. Let's hear what the judge has to say about the whole case and see who the real father of the child is. In the case of Cheryl Rubin, this court has determined that you are tick, tick, her father. Oh, you already knew that. Uh, uh, you already knew that. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Child support. Here I come. Mr. Sedeno was in the courtroom today to clear his name from the allegations of him being a father. In his heart of heart, he believed he was done with Ms. Ramirez and he no longer had any kind of feelings for her. He even claimed she was trying to pin the baby on him just so she could have him back in her life. Ms. Ramirez, on the other hand, something totally different to say. She claimed despite the allegations, Mr. Sedeno got another woman pregnant while she was conceiving her baby and now his covering his tracks by pretending he isn't the father. Sedeno, you are seeing Seeking the results of a paternity test for Ms. Ramirez's one and a half month old daughter, Aislinn. You claim you two broke up and now you have no feelings for Ms. Ramirez whatsoever. You say she's claiming you are her baby's father in a fraudulent attempt to try to get you to come back to her. Yes, Your Honor. Apparently, Mr. Sedano was Ms. Ramirez's everything, from her first love to her first boyfriend, and basically everything after that. She was pretty hurt that he would want to deny her and her daughter, and and also claimed she was trying to pin a baby, they brought welcomed into this world in him. If I were in her shoes, I would also feel very betrayed. I'm not trying to trap him with this baby. I'm actually, I'm very shocked, I'm very hurt that he would even deny her. He's my first love, he's my first boyfriend, my first everything. And I'm tired of him sending me mixed signals. He comes to my house, he, you know, he tells me he doesn't love me, he doesn't want to be with me, but yet he's always trying to hug up on me, he tries to sleep with me. And I've even tried to prove it, I've proved it multiple times to his girlfriend. You know? What you're about to hear will definitely make you ask if Ms. Ramirez was a child, because only kids would do something so petty. Apparently, Ms. Ramirez was in contact with his girlfriend. After she and Mr. Sedano had split up, she told his new girlfriend that she was going to sleep with him regardless of the fact that he was in another relationship. She wasn't bluffing, though. She actually did make the phone call while she was in bed with Mr. Sedano and sent her proof that she kept to her word. Wow. I told her that I was going to sleep with him, and she told me to prove it, so when we were having 
having sex, I called her on the phone so that she could hear. What? Yeah. Wait a minute. You got on the phone with his girlfriend. Yes. I gotta get this. <laughs> you said, I'm gonna have sex with my ex, which is your current boyfriend. Yeah, because I She would... said, prove it. So the way you decided to prove it was by calling her to let her, for that she can hear it for herself. With a smile on his face, Mr. Sedano didn't deny that it happened, but that wasn't his focus in the courtroom. He was here to talk about the doubts he had about the child Ms. Ramirez claimed was his. It was pretty funny because Mr. Sedano and Ms. Ramirez were still very intimate while he still had a girlfriend. He tried to deny that it happened only once, but Ms. Ramirez was quite certain that their business had been going on for quite some time. Well, she's time. got like five to four of the guys that she sleeps with daily, so I mean. I don't sleep with any. I don't have so, time. So, Mr. Sedano, are you submitting to this court that you've only slept with Ms. Ramirez one time since you've been in the relationship no, with your we, current no, girlfriend? No, I've... I have, I keep track of my monthly cycle. I know when we slept together. I'm asking you. We slept together just a Not few weeks ago. Not since I've been back from Atlanta, no. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Mr. Sedano couldn't even keep his stories in check. Funny enough, the child in question wasn't the only child he had with Ms. Ramirez. He had two other kids in the equation, but was very certain that the current child in question was definitely not his. I mean, how does that make sense in any way? To make things even funny, he claimed that when he went to visit Ms. Ramirez and check on his other kids with her, he was the victim in the situation. I'm sorry, you were the what? I got pregnant. I slept with someone about seven months before I got pregnant with Aislinn, and then I didn't start speaking to him again until I was four months pregnant. So I was already pregnant with Aislinn when I started talking to that guy again. So how is he the father? So now, Mr. Sedano, you stated to the court that you got a list of doubts. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a list. I'd like to see that list. Yeah. Jerome, can you hand me that list? of doubts. <laughs> okay, one of your doubts is that you weren't in a relationship at the time. Mr. Sedano had a long list of doubts that made him feel he couldn't be the father of her third child. He claimed the pregnancy happened way too fast, and he was sure the period they both had sex didn't add up to her getting pregnant. Aside from that, she slept with another man around the window of conception, which would also mean that there is no way he can be the father. Ms. Ramirez, on the other hand, denied it all. You heard through the grapevine, through a friend, that she was setting you up. Yeah, he showed me the text. And what did this say? Pretty much, I'm gonna get Michael to have another kid with me. Well, I just had a kid with my girlfriend a month prior to her baby that she just pregnant. had. So you got a baby right now yep. by your current girlfriend. Yes. And this baby is one month older. Yes. The baby in question here today, only one month older mm -hmm. than the baby you have with your girlfriend. Yes. It was a blaming contest in the courtroom, and they were very good at doing playing it. Ms. Ramirez claimed he never enjoyed spending time with her kids. She said every time he came to pick them up, he was always so eager to drop them off. Why? Because his current girlfriend didn't want him to spend any time with her. In his defense, he said any time he went to visit the kids, she also tried to sleep with him. On several occasions, he tried to resist, but as she seemed very persistent, they always ended up having sex. These two definitely need to see a therapist. Okay, how I take the kids, but can you do this for me? No, like, that's it's not never why I'm like there. that. I let him take the kids. He'll say he's gonna take the kids for a few days. He calls me hours later talking about, I need to drop them off. I need to go do something. He doesn't like to keep them. So I am more comfortable with him watching them at my house. And what's the point of taking them if you want to return them? I'll, he'll say, okay, I'm well, gonna take them for a few days. Have... The cats started to fly out of the box and Ms. Ramirez started to come clean about why she actually decided to get pregnant. She was very jealous of Mr. Sedano's new girlfriend and the moment she found out she was pregnant, she decided to have his child too. Basically, she wanted him to focus all his attention on her since she already had two kids with him. A third one would have made everything perfect. Maybe Mr. Ramirez was right after all. She was definitely trying to trap him and win him over. Super conscious mind. <sighs> maybe Let's my be honest, Ms. Ramirez. Oh, hey, maybe my super conscious mind. I did it to get back at her, which is, I feel bad for it. Just, I love my daughter and I got pregnant for the wrong reason, but that's why I did it. So is that why you so had an ovulation you calendar? you admitted to the court that you I have an ovulation, ovulation calendar, calendar because I keep track of my monthly cycle. There's no reason an innocent child should be suffering because of the mistakes adults make. At this point, you sort of feel sorry for the little child in question. These two had made a fool of themselves, and they were trying to make their child suffer for their mistakes. Anyway, it's time to see what the DNA results say about all of this. Mr. Sedano, 
You are her father. I told you, she is your baby. You look surprised. A little bit. I'm not surprised. Yeah, you knew what you were doing. Yeah, you exactly. Be okay. Ms. Cousin and her mother had one goal in that courtroom. That was to prove to her ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend that he was the father of her child. Trust me, these guys weren't here to play. From the looks on both their faces, they were ready to fight till there was no more strength in them. Mr. Bell, on the other hand, didn't even care about what they had to say. In his defense, he claimed Ms. Cousin already told him he wasn't the father, and all she was trying to do was ruin his six-year relationship. Others say you had no choice but to drag the defendant, Mr. Bell, into court today because you're fed up with his lies. Yes, he are. denies being the father of your seven-month-old son, Taquan, and has even gone to the extreme by blocking all contact with you. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. Mr. Bell, you say that Ms. Cousin has told you that you are not Taquan's father and say she's trying to use this baby to bust up your six-year relationship. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. There was so much tension coming from everyone in that courtroom. Ms. Cousin's mom was a force not to be reckoned with. She had all the power in the world to fight anyone who wronged her and her daughter. She wasn't the one who was hurt, but she sure was doing all the talking in that courtroom. She claimed that she was tired of all the lies Ms. Bell had been feeding people, and it was finally time for someone to put him in his place. Lies because he a two-time liar. He told my daughter Did that he was single that he was not in a relationship. Why you can't I know he was in a relationship talk, with her because I seen his picture on her phone when she started Who is being about? with him. I seen how her attitude changed. Who did I you know, sleep I with? You or her? I knew that she was pregnant. Who did I you know, sleep with? You or I her? I met you. I met you at a relative house. Apparently, Mr. Bell lied to her daughter and told her he was not in any relationship, but deep down, he had been seeing someone else. Mr. Bell was definitely not going to keep quiet while they dragged his name through the mud. He claimed they only went out once, and there was no form of relationship in the mix. We went out once, but that was it. A whole weekend? No. I had to get back to her. You went out once? A whole weekend? Yes. And then not only that, y'all had can lunch she, together Can she let her work. daughter talk? I she wasn't her there? Room. I go in her room, I found receipts with two combos on it. I asked her what a combo is for. She, for him and her. Mr. Bell wasn't just sleeping with her. He was also using her to sort out some of his bills. Ms. Cousin was furious. She couldn't understand why a man would lie to her daughter and still manipulate her into paying his bills. The worst about the whole thing was he didn't deny it one bit. You can definitely understand where all her anger is coming from because I would feel the exact same way. When she should have been Were you paying his phone bills? bills? Yes. While she was paying his phone bill and paying him, buying him lunch, I was also doing other things for me and my husband have a roof over our head. We don't have no other income but what my husband do is work. And at the end of the day, I want Cortez to step up and take the responsibility and be a man and help take care of his son. Mr. Bell wasn't changing his story. He stood firm with his side of the story and said everything they accused him of was a big fat lie. There was no relationship between them and all he did was flirt with her and eat whatever food she offered him, nothing more. He even went as far as saying they had sex in the car and she never visited his heim. Wow. No. Well, you said you already ate the food because she was buying it. Yeah, she offered. So, okay. Mr. Bell, you said this was a one-time thing when you had sex with... In a car. Yes. Oh, okay, so you had oh. sex in a car. Did you use protection? Yes. No lie. Yes. No lie. Miss Cousin and her mom, they're claiming that this was going on. This was an ongoing relationship. That's not true? No. When Miss Cousin's daughter found out she was pregnant, she called Mr. Bell to tell him about it, and on the spot, he denied the pregnancy, saying it couldn't be his, and that he wanted nothing to do with the baby. When I came home, I called him. I said, I'm pregnant. He said, oh, well, call me back. Let me know what you gonna do. And that was it, and he hung up the phone. Did you tell your manager at work? I told my manager, because that's the day that my back was hurting. She said, and she you told go. me the baby wasn't mine. I don't want Why the baby you? by you anyway. Wait, she he just me. said that you told him the baby wasn't his. He's a compulsive liar. All he do no, is lie was turning into an unending catastrophe in the courtroom. The judge had taken enough of their rants and arguments, and she decided it was time to bring the situation to a close by reading out the DNA results. Who do you think the father of the child would be? Mr. Baker or his so-called best friend? In the case of Cousin versus Bell, when it comes to seven-month-old Taquan Cousin, Mr. Bell, you are the father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. I will take my, I'll take my child's support papers in the mail. You've been chirping off is. all day. All day. You, you could not let them get a sentence out mm -hmm. without downplaying everything they said. Mm -hmm. Everything. You got two innocent women standing here. 